Hi there, everyone. Welcome to another week of uh, Marketers Take Flight. Hi there, everyone. Oops. Welcome to another week of uh, Marketers. Okay, sorry, I had a technical glitch. So, welcome to another week of um, live Q&A with Lindsay. Um, I'm from Marketers Take Flight and welcome to everyone. Um, you may notice some different things this week. I am trying a new technology um, to live stream this um, live Q&A and it adds nice things like this little bar down here and some other graphics. It also allows me to display some comments um, easier on the screen, um, which you guys can't see, but it's over here to my right. And um, I can see the comments. I can even um, show them on the screen to you guys, um, but it do won't show your name. So I could click a comment here and I'm using a service called StreamYard and um, you'll notice it shows my name and picture from Facebook and I can toggle on and off the comments. However, it won't show your name unless you give StreamYard permission, um, but you don't have to. You can always just put your name in the comment um, and I'll ask, you know, answer your questions and comments if you don't want to give another service access to your Facebook. So no biggie on that. So I can toggle on and off. Also through this service, I'll be able to share my screen and maybe bring on some co um, some co-hosts to this Q&A live. So I'm experimenting. So you guys are all my guinea pigs. So let me know how you like it and if it's coming through um, like the normal lives because I can't really see. I'll just have to come and watch this later after we're done. So thank you for being my guinea pig. Again, this is Q&A live with Lindsay, um, our regular Thursday thoughts, um, talking about working from home, working from home with kids, working with home from kids, trying to get their schoolwork done um, while managing your proposals and your marketing efforts for your AEC firm. Today's topic is going to focus on leading a marketing team. So you may have a marketing team that you manage or that you're responsible for, um, and now you're leading them virtually, um, or you may be part of a marketing team um, you know, who is the manager, but you're a member of that team, but you still want your team to be um, performing at high levels and keep that culture you've so built, you so took the time to build while you guys were in the offices. And so I'm gonna talk about some tips and some strategies that I have personally used or I've researched or I've reached out to my network to ask for advice on how to manage and lead virtually during this time. So we're gonna get started on that in just a few minutes. So I'm going to, um, once you join me, just put um, say hi in the comments below. Again, I think I can see them this time. I'm trying new systems out. Um, to make it easier to manage these Facebook Lives on my own. And um, just put your name in the comment because it won't let me see your name. It'll just say Facebook user. Um, and so that way I can just know, say, hi, this is Lindsay, you know, join today. So with that said, we'll go ahead and get started on this week's topic. Um, you know, we're going into, this is my third week um, with, no, third or fourth week, we're almost into a month now, I think, of being home, working from home with the kids. Um, and so this, you know, it's it's good to wear. This is our second week of at-home learning, distance learning, virtual learning, um, whatever you want to call it. I'm not really calling it homeschool because I feel like I'm more of like their IT manager, um, trying to log into all the different systems. Um, I had to buy a second computer or, you know, a second family computer, um, and, um, you know, configuring it and configuring them all and setting them all up. So I feel like I've been doing more IT than actual tutoring. Um, I will say my son is in 10th grade geometry and I've had to Google everything that he's needed help with. I don't remember anything about geometry. Um, I was a pretty decent student, um, with calculus, but I don't remember anything about geometry. So I am not homeschooling him in that. We are going to refer to um, the Google the Google assistant and um, his teacher. And he his teacher has been very um, responsive. So <laughs> um, heads up, you know, so, you know, shout out to all the other parents, moms and dads who are trying to recall 10th grade geometry. So that's how my week's going. Let me know your favorite subject to homeschool in the comments below, quote unquote, favorite subject. So 
let's talk now. Um, again, as you join us, just put your comments below. I think I can see them. Um, so, and although also for those who are just signing on, I'm using a new technology today. So let me know if the broadcast is coming out different because um, I'm using a third party program instead of just going live straight through Facebook. So I'm testing this out. So just let me know if you can hear me okay, if the video is coming through. I also want to give you a heads up that um, the people across the street are removing trees. So if you hear some chainsaws or um, a big thud, which happened about 10 minutes before I went live, it's because they're chopping down huge pine trees across the street. So that's fun. You know, the perils of working from home and trying to record from home. So let's talk about leading a virtual marketing team. Now, I have some experience in this in all of my firms. Um, when I've managed a marketing team, they've been remote. They've been working in other offices um, for the most part. I have had um, my team sitting side by side physically and then also remotely in other offices. But I think we're also in a unique situation now because it's not like somebody is just working in another office of your firm. Everybody's working from home um, and have all these other distractions like, you know, being the school IT coordinator and geometry teacher, like I mentioned earlier. So I think it presents some real challenges and opportunities for managers who are leading marketing departments. And um, for the most part, I feel like everybody's doing a great job, at least the folks that I reached out to to help research these tips and this advice. Um, so I'm going to cover some of those tips today. Um, and if you have any other questions about that, just um, please leave them in the comments below or other questions that you have about working from home. I know I did receive a couple before we went live, so I'll answer those at the end. So let's start with leading a team working virtually. So the first thing I would strongly suggest is setting clear objectives and expectations for those objectives. So what do I mean by that? Um, you as a leader need to tell people what they need to be working on. I mean, let's face it, you know, you need to tell them and have clear expectations. Now, if you have proposals going on and pursuits going on, I think, and they were and those marketing coordinators or proposal managers were already assigned those, you know, you need to give them the tools and the resources to continue those. But if you had other initiatives going on, like um, a, re, a firm rebrand or website redesign or like a thought leadership, you know, marketing campaigns, you know, how are those being affected? What should people work on um, towards those efforts? And what does that look like now? Maybe your firm shifting priorities or, you know, other things are important. So, and, and if you don't have a lot of proposals on, then what, what are the initiatives or the objectives that your team should be working on? And, I would highly recommend as the leader to come out of the gate strong on this and you set the direction and you set the tone of the objectives. Um, you might be able to get some feedback from your team, but this really isn't a time, like people need direction and, and, and that leader to lead them in this time. So this is a really good time for you to come and say, okay, now we're going to focus on rewriting all of our project descriptions. And these three people on the team, you guys are going to be um, on that theme for that. Um, we're also going to work on our website content. So these other three people, you guys are going to be on the team for that, you know, and just coming out and giving people um, some real direction of what to work on. I'd rather come out. Um, I'd rather come out strong with some objectives, objectives instead of saying, oh, well, let's have a three hour brainstorming session of what should we be working on? Now is not the time to do that with your teams. They are nervous. They might not, especially, and this is really for those those firms that might not have a lot of proposals um, or the proposals have been delayed. And they just, you know, of course, if you have proposals, those usually take precedent. Um, but for everything else, um, you know, when you don't have proposals, what should folks be working on? Because, you know, if you have a good team in place, they're not just coming and saying, oh, well, I'm working from home now. It's like a three-week vacation. They want something to do. They want to show their value. They want to make sure 
that they are performing and producing. Um, so nobody second guesses that they're working from home. So you as a leader need to give them that work to, to, to work on. So that's one, set clear objectives and you as a leader set them. Um, and then give the, and assign them to folks and then give them the flexibility of how to achieve them. So it's a good balance of, okay, here's the three or four things we're going to focus on. Here's who's going to lead those efforts out of the team. And now you guys go figure out the best uh, plan of, a, you know, plan of approach to get them done. And I'm here to support you and make sure you have the resources and knock down any roadblocks that you have in the way of getting those done. And so that's where the flexibility comes in, but you have to set that initial direction. Now, what if you're saying, well, Lindsay, I'm a marketing department of one. I don't have a team. I am, I am, I'm it. And I would say, well, you are the marketing leader for the firm. Um, you know, just because you don't have somebody reporting directly to you does not mean that you are any less of a leader. And so what I would recommend is set your own objectives and say, okay, here are the things I am working on and communicate those to your firm leadership, um, your, the other members of your firm leadership and say, are these, you know, are these still a priority to the firm? Do we need to reassess? And I'm going to start working on these and I'm going to be giving you reports and, you know, and I'm just going to figure out how to get them done, but this is what I'm working on. So communicating that to, to outside of your group. Okay, let me do a check in here. I'm not seeing any comments up. So if you're here, just comment below just to make sure. Let me check. I do my fail safe phone here. Um, let me see how I do this. Um, maybe we'll go here. So just bear with me for just a second. Um, let's go to the... Let's just see if it's live here. Just doing a check, a technology check. Oh, great. It's live. Okay. So um, I always like to do a technology check um, to make sure that I'm not just sitting here talking for 15 minutes and nobody, and I'm not live and nobody's seeing this. So, <laughs> okay. So we had number one, set clear objectives. Number two is use an online task management system. So you guys might have, when you were working in the office, have used something like, um, Microsoft Teams. I preferred Rike or Asana. So a project management tool um, to assign tasks, especially if you had a bigger team spread across offices. Um, and I would say this is especially important now. And I prefer to use Rike, which is W-R-I-K-E. And I did a, a lot of research and I liked that one because you could create tasks for anything, um, you know, whether they're proposal related or not, make assignments to folks. And then it had a Gantt chart. So I could see who was overloaded and who was, um, who, you know, had some capacity. And so this, so as a marketing director, this was really important. So I could make sure, especially with our marketing coordinators, that if somebody was drowning in proposal deadlines, I could quickly see that, um, and say, Hey, do you need some help? How are these going? Let's, you know, this person over here doesn't have very much. Let's see how we can, you know, get that person involved and help you with some of these deadlines. You still lead the efforts, but we'll give you some support. Um, so that was Rike. I liked using that one. Um, but there's a gazillion and there's more online now to today with Asana. And I think there's a Monday, um, you know, but it's important now more than ever because you can't, you don't, you're not physically able to see what they're working on. You can't just walk by their desk and, and see that they're physically frazzled or see what's up on their screen. Um, so you need to just, you know, you can go pop into your project management or your task management system and see who's working on what and when they've completed stuff. And it also starts with you as the leader. So if you had something like that and maybe you didn't really use it, but you encouraged your team to use it, now's the time for you to use it and step up and just lead by example. You might already been, be doing that, but I just wanted to point that out, that everything that you're working on needs to be in there. Anything that somebody needs your help with, they need to assign you a task. And that way you know how people need, you know, what uh, things people need your help with. So 
Tip number two is using an online task management system. You will notice that I did not say Slack. I don't think Slack is more of um, a task management system. It is really good for communication. And I'm going to talk about some other ways to use Slack. But I don't, it's really hard to, um, you know, these other ones like Rike, you can set up a project and give the project assignments and assign those assignments to people with dates. And so, I, you know, I've used Slack very little, but I know it's more of a communication tool and not necessarily like a task management tool. So, um, you know, firms may use it differently, but um, I really like, I, like I said, I've personally used Rike, W-R-I-K-E. My husband uses Asana and loves it. I know a lot of folks use Asana. Um, and so, and then even I've explored some of the stuff in Microsoft Teams. That's a software we all already have, or most of us already have. And there's some tasks in there and you can create a team, but it doesn't really have the scheduling or the Gantt chart to see people's workload over a time scale. And that's really what I was looking for. Now, there might be some other things in Teams that I haven't I haven't really explored. And this was several years ago before Teams really existed. So I just, you know, I, when I find a software, I just stick with it until, you know, until I find something better. So use an online task man management system. Now, the next thing is to use video for all internal meetings. And I know you're like, ah, video, you know, because I got to get dressed and I got to, you know, and I said, you know, what I really recommend is for your internal marketing department meetings, and you might have a weekly production meeting or biweekly production meeting. Um, hopefully it's not just monthly. If it is just monthly where you just have your internal department, your marketing team meet, I would up it right now at least till weekly, um, maybe twice a week, like a Monday and a Thursday, just to do quick check-ins, maybe 30 minutes. If you're using that online task management system, then you kind of already know what people are working on. So the the meeting, especially with the video turned on, just allows you to physically check on people and see how they're doing and tell them, you know, ask them what resources they need and what's stopping them and what, you know, or what's hindering their work progress and how you can break down those barriers and, and start getting things to flow. But using the internal um, or using video on these internal meetings will also just help you know, most of us marketers, like we need to, we thrive on like communication and being around people and not just our kids and our spouses, but actual other adults too. So um, that's also good too. And especially if you have folks that maybe don't have spouses or kids and they're just home alone um, with their, with their dog. So, or their cat. Yeah. So I'm getting some comments here. And for those of you who are a little bit late, we are using a new system or I am, there's no other we here. And so I can see your comments, but I can't see your name. So when you comment, just put your name before it. That way I can give you like a proper shout out. Um, and so, and also let me know how the streaming is going. I'm using, you guys are my guinea pigs. I'm using a new system called stream yard and it allows me to do this beautiful graphic here. Um, as well as it's going to allow me to bring on some guests and do some Facebook live guesting, um, guest hosting. So um, also, if you want a, to, to be a co-host with me on one of these uh, live Thursdays, um, let me know in the comments below and you could be a future guest. Oh, there you go. Hi, Paul. Thanks for joining. Okay. So we were talking about tips for leading a marketing team virtually or remotely. Um, so, so far we talked about setting clear objectives and then we talked about using an online task management system, including yourself as a leader, um, something like Asana or Rike. And I, my personal preference is Rike. And I'll drop a link to that system in the, um, in the comments below after the video. Um, I think it's free up to like five, four or five users. And then it's, it's pretty affordable, um, after that. So um, and then we talked about using um, video for all internal meetings. And we started doing this at my firm, Full Sail Partners, last Friday. And I will tell you, I was not, they didn't let us know. Um, but so it was Friday. So I was not dressed. I get dressed on Thursdays for you guys. So Friday, I was not dressed. Um, and um, and so we got on video and I just got over it. And ev no, everybody else was um not dressed and casual too. So it felt comfortable. So 
with your marketing teams, have a weekly meeting, um, maybe twice a week for 30 minutes and get on video, tell everybody they need to be on video. Um, a lot of teams are already doing this, so I might just be preaching to the choir, but it is very important for you as a leader to kind of do that check on people because you can tell, you know, if you're just doing a conference call or you're not turning on the video, you're losing a lot of the body language um, and just looks on everybody's faces. Um, it says a lot. And, you know, if you're seeing somebody in distress, you know, obviously you don't want to point it out in the meeting. I don't need to tell you that, but you can give them a call after the meeting and see, you know, talk to them about their schedule or their workload or just, you know, being flexible and compassionate right now is probably the best thing you can do as a leader. Okay, I'm going to take a cup of coffee here. We have some others joining us. Hi, Stacy. Um, oh, good. I sound great. So this technology is working. Yay for technology wins. Okay, so the next tip or the last tip, which has a bunch of sub tips in it is or I'm sorry, this isn't the last tip, second to last tip. I'm trying to get to the fun stuff. But this, the next tip is to, to keep normal business or normal working hours, but be flexible. So what do I mean by this? Typically, try to have your team, you know, set, set the expectation for your team to be available, whatever your firm's normal working hours were before all of this. So if it was eight to five, nine to six, um, you know, and when I say be available, tell them like, hey, you need to be kind of online or be reachable or that's when people are okay to schedule meetings with you based on your calendar and availability. And that'll really help. But I say be flexible because not everybody can do that. If you um, have young have young kids um, that my kids are older, as you guys know, 16 and 10. So they're somewhat can work on their own. Like they're back in their rooms, not on the internet. So not to mess up this broadcast, but so they're somewhat, you know, can kind of, I can give them, the, we can go through their schoolwork and then they can go off and do it. But if you have toddlers or um, pre preschool age children, there's no way that you can do that for any a sustained amount of time. So you might need to alter your, work schedule and might need to work, you know, before they wake up, during nap time, after they go to bed. So as a leader, you need to, you know, as an employee, you need to communicate that with your manager and say, hey, I'm going to be working. I'm going to need to work different hours. I can't really be available during normal business hours, but I will, you know, block off my calendar when I'm not available. So people know not to schedule a meeting at 10 a.m. Um, or try not to unless it's an emergency. Um, and then as a leader, I would just say, you know, you if your employees don't tell you, you need to ask them. Chance, hopefully, you know, if they have toddlers at home um, and and be compassionate, be flexible and be compassionate, you know, as much as you can. Um, you know, our clients aren't going to change proposal deadlines. So you might need to figure out different ways to get the same work done with altered schedules. And so that's why I talk about being flexible and you as a leader, you know, really you know, could come up with some of those solutions. Another instance might be, I know I have a lot of friends whose spouses are on the front lines. They're either in the medical industry or they're EMS or they're firefighters or police officers. And so they work, they don't work standard shifts. Um, you know, they're 12 hours on, 12 hours off. Um, so they, even though they might not be a single parent, they're a single parent when those people are home. So the tip is to try to maintain normal hours for the majority of your staff, but be flexible for individual situations. And that'll go a long way. I I know it would for me personally, um, for loyalty and engagement and making sure that I'm, I'm performing my highest as an employee because I'm getting that grace and flexibility. So I know as a leader, you know, it's, it's, it can be sometimes frustrating when you're trying to schedule a meeting and nobody's available at the same time, but, you know, try to be, um, accommodating as much as possible. Okay, now to the last tip, and this is like all the fun stuff, right? So try to maintain normal culture, your normal um, work culture, firm culture, department culture, but embrace new ways to do that. And I've already seen, you know, um, especially in this group, the Marketers Take Flight co-working community, we've already started sharing some ideas. There's There's been some great ideas 
um, thrown around. And I'll just recap some of those so you don't have to go search through all these posts. But, you know, let me, I have a list here. So I'm going to, I want to refer to them. So um, one is using Microsoft Teams or Slack channels. So setting up different Microsoft, inside Mar Microsoft, I can't speak, Microsoft Teams, you can have different channels, just like Slack does their teams, but not called channels, but you can have different channels or teams that are different themes, um, that are different themes or different conversations or topics. And I know for those who already use Slack, you probably already have some set up, but if your team is new to Slack or using teams in this way, you can set up different conversation threads or on um, different topics. And those, so these can range anything from funny work memes or funny memes, just so people can go there and get a laugh, to work from home tips, um, schooling from home tips or um, activities for kids, um, to anything to recipe swaps. Um, I know I just got a, yesterday it was funny, I haven't gotten one of these in years, but a chain email, you know, one of those emails where somebody blind copies you and then you have to, um, send it out to 25 people you know, and then put your name up top. I haven't got one of those in like 10 years, but I got one yesterday for a recipe swap. And I'm like, I don't want to do this. But I would rather do a Slack channel or a Microsoft Teams channel that says, hey, here's some recipes um, that my kids like and are super easy. Um, you know, I'm a big crock pot um, fan and recipes. So I have a lot of like dump recipes where you just like throw them in the crock, crock pot and forget it because I don't really like to cook. Um, so using Microsoft Teams or Slack channels to have different conversations. And then that way when people need a break and they're having a moment, they can go to your funny meme channel and get a laugh or a pets or a kids channel, you know, so you can see some of the, your coworkers and pets. So, and this is something that could be specific just to the marketing department or it could be firm wide and marketing can just take a lead in this for your whole firm. So another thing is, I know some firms have certain dress up or dress down days or themed dress days. I would say still do those. Um, we don't at our firm, I always wanted to at my last firm, I always, um, you know, I always tried to get like Hawaiian Friday or, um, you know, Hawaiian Friday, I was trying to get that or tacky tourist or 80s day and nobody else would dress up with me. So we didn't do that at my last firm. Maybe I'll try to do that here, maybe in marketer take flight. If you want to dress up, just, you know, um, put a comment below. But if you do that with your team already or your firm, have a dedicated channel to that. Still encourage your employees to do that at home and take pictures and post them on your Microsoft Teams discussion thread or your Slack channel because that'll really, you know, and I have seen not necessarily in the AE industry, but I've seen um, other things on Facebook where companies are still doing that, but they're getting their whole family involved. And so they're having their kids dress up, they're having, you know, so it's just kind of fun. It, it also, I think, helps with the kids. Um, I know my kids are learning a lot more about what I do <laughs> all day. Um, and so that's been, um, you know, if you can get them involved in something like that, I think that also helps with knowing what mommy and daddy do while they're at school normally. Okay. Another tip is to have virtual lunch hours. Now I've seen, and I know you guys are all really good about having virtual happy hours. Um, you know, we, we picked up on that rather quickly. Um, but how about a virtual lunch hour? And this is where you could set up like a zoom or a Facebook or a, a Microsoft teams. Um, and everybody puts on their camera, but you can maybe encourage folks that have laptops, most of us do now, to go and take their laptop in their lunch and eat it outside or at their dining room table. And this way, everybody just has lunch together. Like you would, especially if your team went out to lunch a lot, like we would go out to lunch um, at my last firm at least once a week. I think most of us would go as a team or we'd at least go get takeout and then eat together like in our bullpen, bullpen area. And so, um, you know, we don't, can't do that anymore because um, we're all working from home, but maybe have a Zoom um, or a Microsoft Teams or whatever you guys use for your video conferencing and just encourage folks say, hey, Tuesdays at one or Tuesdays at, at, at noon. I wonder if you guys just heard that. Um, they're chopping down trees ac across the street and one just fell and it was really loud. Um, 
And, and this is especially important for if you have people on your team that live alone um, or don't have any spouses or kids because they might not have any, you know, they need more interaction because, um, and even those of us with kids, I need more adult interaction. <laughs> so, um, so a virtual lunch hour and then the virtual happy hours. Um, the lunch I think is good too, because you can talk about work in a more casual environment or you can see what other people are having. And it's, and if you have people on your team that don't necessarily drink, they might feel excluded. Um, so this is just a better, um, not a better, just a different way to have community and engagement with your team. And then last, um, but not least is send notes and virtual treats. Who doesn't love getting a card in the mail or treats? And this is, um, I used to, at my last firm when I managed a team, I loved um, this company called Baudville, B-A-U-D-V-I-L-L-E. Um, they do really cheesy like work gifts and um, like swag and flair and it's super cheesy, but people love it. And they do like tickets where you can like give out tickets for good jobs. And it's just really cheesy. So they had these like lunch pails that you could buy that were all filled with tchotchkes. You know, it was like stuff like thanks for your commitment. And it was mints and stuff like that. But it was it, it was great graphics. That's what I really liked about it. And it was super cheesy. But I, I think my team really liked it. They told me that they really liked, you know, all that, that corny stuff. And so it's hard to give out that stuff now when you're not sitting next to somebody or in the office. So mail notes, um, through the mail or treats, like who doesn't love treats. And, um, a few weeks ago, I discovered a company called greetable that will send these like really unique boxes with a, like a little treat inside. And then one of our co uh, co-working community members, Rachel, posted about another company called Brightbox that will send, and these are really affordable. They're like $5 to send confetti cards and other types of like snack packs and stuff like that. So, you know, if your team's really been working hard um, and adjusting and, or maybe they just submitted a huge pursuit that started before all of this and they just submitted, or even if you just want to brighten people's day for no reason, I would highly recommend looking at something like that. You don't even have to do that. You could probably just do a handwritten card and just mail it regular. And I think people would appreciate that. Um, because you know, who doesn't love a note in the mail that is not a bill, right? That's a personal note. So, so that's really my tips, um, for working remote or for leading a marketing department remotely. I do know that I had some other questions come in. Oh, and here's another comment. Yes. Oh, this is a good one. Um, so it, um, I can't see your name. So if you want to post your name, but um, that person wrote, I think it's important for managers to remind their team not to work 24 seven and to set parameters of their hours of operations. That is critical. There needs to be um, a time, you know, that you shouldn't set that expectation. Um, and you as a leader shouldn't be working 24 seven. So if they're seeing emails from you at 11 o'clock at night, and that's not really your set time to work, don't send the emails because then they're going to think that they need to be on, um, at 11 o'clock at night. And another thing I wanted to add was, um, and we'll probably do another whole Facebook live about this, but morning rituals, like starting your day, um, and how important it is to kind of have, um, you know, some consistency in your morning rituals to just start, you know, physically and to start mentally right for the, for the day. But that comment reminded me of having an ending ritual to the day, like ending your work day, physically saying at five o'clock, I'm done for the day. Um, closing down my email browser, turning off my computer, walking away from my desk, maybe putting away my computer because if I'm working at the dining room table and transforming the dining room table into back into a dining room table. So maybe we'll do a whole nother topic on that. Um, cause that could be its own session. So, okay. And then somebody missed the name for the website for the confetti cards. So the confetti cards, there's two websites. I believe the one with the confetti cards is bright box. And I'll put some links in these, um, in the comments after the video, and then there's another one called Greetable. Um, it's not spelled like the word Greetable. You know, they did some unique spelling. So I, I think it's missing the E at the end. 
Um, but greet like G E or G R E E T A B L, I think is what it is. And then the other one's bright box. And I believe it's the bright box that has the confetti cards. So, and for those of you who joined us a little bit late, I am using a new technology um, to do this Facebook Live. Um, so I just want to give you guys an inside. It's called StreamYard. So if your firm's going to do any type of live streaming um, through YouTube, um, I think it does through YouTube, Facebook, um, even LinkedIn Live. I have not received LinkedIn Live yet, but for those of you who have, um, it, it streams it through that. It allows you to do these banners and it will allow me to um, add more guests. So we'll be doing some guests, some live guests. If you want to be a guest, let me know, comment below. Um, and so that way you're not just staring at my head all, all the time. And it will allow me to do screen share too. So, um, so I'm testing out this technology on you guys. Um, but what it doesn't do in a Facebook group, it doesn't allow me to see your name on the comments. Um, so when you post a comment or question, just type your name first. It just says Facebook grouper, group, uh, Facebook user, but it does allow me to show the comments. So here we go. Here's that website somebody posted. Um, and you can see down here, it's just saying Facebook user. Um, but here's the website, brightboxes.shop. Um, and, and then I can turn off there. So there's a lot of neat things. So you will see, we will improve these week after week. Um, and so I did have another question come in. Let me see here. Okay. Kind of a tech question. So I'm going to throw this out to the group too. Um, their weather is getting, and this, I know this came from Stacy. So hi Stacy. Um, Stacy says our weather is getting nicer for a few days anyways. So for all of you who don't know, Stacy's in Oregon. Um, so what is a good outside work setup and how do you boost Wi-Fi to work outdoors? Great question. It has been absolutely beautiful here in Florida. So not to rub it in. <laughs> um, oh, hi, Joy. Um, so I have not specifically tried to set up my computer and work outside. Um, I know that I tried one time and it was just way too bright. Um, now in Oregon, you might not have the bright sunshine, as bright a sunshine that I do here in Florida. I would definitely say you would need shade because the computer screen is not going to, you know, you're not going to be able to see it that well. So get yourself an umbrella or work under, um, you know, some kind of patio or something. Um, and um, so we definitely need sh shade. I see Joy is here, um, Joy Gwynn, and I know she's in Reno, Nevada, and I know she works poolside a lot. I'm calling you out, Joy. Um, so if you have any tips, that would be great to share. Um, now for the Wi-Fi, um, that could be a challenge. I do know that um, we live in a block construction house. Um, our house is made out of CMU block. And so our Wi-Fi is a little bit spotty outside, um, but we placed our router um, in the middle of the house and we do have a TV set up outside, you know, for football games and we, that's connected through Wi-Fi, and we can have the fire stick. And so that is working pretty well. So, uh, um, and we can get games and we can get, um, TV out, you know, TV over the internet cause we don't have cable. So TV over the internet to our television outside just, but it's attached to the house. It's right on the outside of the house. Um, so I would suggest maybe just looking at your router placement to make sure it's um, our router is right here um, underneath this table. Um, key router placement for these Facebook lives, but um, which isn't too far from our back deck. So I guess I would just look if you have a back patio or a back deck um, where how far away is it from your router? Um, Oh, okay. And then Helen has some good ideas. You can get router boosters. Yes, that's what I was going to recommend. And an external MiFi um, to use to have good connectivity outside. Oh, I haven't even tried a MiFi. I've got to try that. Um, and she says their router's in the living room. Um, oh, Stacy, sure. I'm going to cover by a router boost. Yeah, we had a, and our old house was two stories. And, um, we got a router booster for the upstairs and it, we got it from Best Buy and it was just one you plugged in. 
Um, and now, of course, this was now six years ago. So I tried to use it here. It doesn't work. I think the technology is a little outdated. Um, but when we had the router booster, it definitely worked. And it, um, cause our signal was uh, slow upstairs in our last house. And so those did work and it wasn't very expensive. I think it was like 50 bucks. I know that my colleague, Kevin, he lives in a multi-story house. Um, his, I believe his office is in the basement and then his girls are home from college. And so they're working at the ground level. And then his wife's, um, offices upstairs, I believe he gets the basement and they've bought some boosters. Um, I think it was the Google home booster or the Google, uh, their booster and it works pretty good. And he walks around, um, outside sometimes when him and I are just on calls, he'll put on his wireless headset and go take a walk out in his yard. So, um, and I think, I think it was the Google one, Google home, Google something. Um, Oh, okay. And for, for those of you who are seeing the comments, my is a Verizon thing. Yes. Those are like the little things that are black um, and you can take them anywhere, not just your house. Um, and I, I don't know if they cost extra or not, but I should probably look into it because we have Verizon phones too. So great conversation. Yeah. And then Stacy said, oh, good. Rub it in um, for the weather. Yeah. It's getting hot. It's going to get up to the nineties today, Stacy. So I think we missed our window for working outside. <laughs> um, and then next week it's supposed to rain here. So it might feel a little bit more like Oregon next week here um, and maybe feel a little bit more like Florida out there with you. <laughs> okay. Does anybody have any other questions, thoughts, comments? Um, about leading a virtual marketing team or working from home. Um, you know, I can't, and I know I asked in the community yesterday about other topics you guys want to cover. So I, I read through those. I'm going to do some work over the weekend. And um, I think next week's topic is going to be about how to, um, you know, stay focused, how to get some focused work time into your day. Um, when you have all these distractions. Um, so if you have any tips or any methods that you use, um, just let me know and I'll feature them and I'll feature you. Or if you want to be a guest and talk with me on this, let me know because now that I have this new technology, I can have up to six people on a Facebook Live. I think that might be a little much. I might just start with one person. Um, so if you want to talk about focused working, um, and how to focus on big projects or getting things done, um, when you need, you know, more than 15 minutes before a kid interrupts you. Um, that's what we're going to talk about. Um, and I have some ideas, um, and some approaches that I take when I need to get things done, like, um, you know, work for clients or, um, you know, or just, you know, stuff like this for marketers take flight. So look for that next week, same time, same place. And again, all of these are recorded. They'll be available in the community. So if you miss it or you miss the first part of it, just go back and rewatch. No big deal. Um, oh, good. You love the technology. Yay. So again, for those of you who, um, you know, want to know what this is, this technology is, it's called streamyard.com. I'm using a free version right now. It's like a free trial version. Um, and so you might see some other whiz bangy things. Um, I just discovered it this week. So we're trying it out. Um, so also one last thing before we go is if you guys love this community as much as I do, will you invite some other colleagues and friends? Um, because this community is only going to get better with the more marketers and business developers in the AEC. AEC industry that we get to, um, you know, that join the community. So if you would today, just, you know, maybe share it on your Facebook um, profile or invite some of your favorite marketers to this group. So with that, if there are any other questions or comments, I will close it out for today. All right, everyone. Thank you and have a gr great rest of your week.